Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 332 with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 332. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Great, good to hear. How am I? Same as usual, nothing's really changed in that regard. Um, kind of thinking about how I'm missing clubbing at the moment and really missing DJing. That's the main thing, DJing. I pronounced that really weird, didn't I? But I'm, miss, I'm missing being there behind the decks in some dingy, um, poorly lit club somewhere, you know, getting up to all sorts of nonsense. That's what I basically miss, I think, from now on. Um, I think I'm approaching that mark where this new reality that we're now getting used to, I'm kind of a bit bored of it. I'm like, you know what, enough. Let's just go back to normal, have some kind of normality. Um, but again, I think I've come to a realization as well, um, by the by, that that's not going to happen. It's not going to go back to normal again. We're going to have to operate in some sort of new normality that's probably going to delay a lot of the things that we know and love. So there has to be a compromise to be reached. Some sort of it, some sort of middle ground needs to be reached, whether it's a warehouse rave, a house party, something needs to happen that I can go and pump my fist up in the air of shake my head like I just don't care. And you know, actually thinking about it, if if and when that happens, I made a commitment to myself not to leave the dance floor for at least four hours. Standard. No toilet, no getting another drink, no going out to get some fresh air. Just pure unadulterated, sweating myself out, dancing on all the good vibes and all the good energy for everyone around me for a good four hours minimum. That's the, my commitment I'm making to myself because God damn it, man. Especially when you start watching live streams, just it's just, I guess as a as an up and coming or as a budding DJ for me, the DJ, you know, watching a DJ live stream is pretty um, uh, helpful, right? You get some tips and tricks about, you know, how to mix or how to blend, um, different kind of uh you know how they basically phrase mixes together the structures the looping techniques all these little cool um things that you can learn by uh watching somebody play live on a live stream right but if you're actually if you're somebody that's really about this culture and you love it for real there's gonna, there's gonna be a part of you that's gonna be like god damn it i just long for just being on the other side of the deck just dancing you're never going to be bothered about playing somewhere. You're going to be, I just want to be in that environment, right? That's what usually happens. When you get the bug of wanting to be involved in nightlife, it usually starts from just being a punter, just going out, meeting people, hanging out in cool places, um, being part of the scene. And then suddenly you're like, you know what? He or she looks like, looks like me. I can do this too. You put on your first night, you whack something up in paint or in Photoshop as a flyer. You put it out there with your friends. You invite all your friends to come down on Facebook. None of them turn up, right? But you just keep doing it anyway because you love it so much. And then it turns into something that you end up, you know, committing, you know, the best part of 10 plus years to, right? Which I have been doing. Um, so the DJ part of it is like, it's like a little treat on top. You know, that's not really the thing that you're actually looking forward to. The good, the thing to look you're looking forward to is actually the connection with people, going to new and interesting places. I know that's what that that's what the main crux of it was for me, being able to go to like you know have a weekend and go uh, and visit some cool clubs in Berlin, cool clubs in Frankfurt, go somewhere in Bristol, Brighton, Newcastle, Manchester, Liverpool, right? All these mad places I've been to just just for the rave. Um, so it does expand your horizons in that way. So. You can just imagine what that must be like for people like myself who has been the last three months. Again, admittedly, you know, I'm not the only one that's suffering through this. Other people are in much worse conditions than I am or in far worse conditions than I am. Um, I know that, but God damn it, man. To have all that, to be used to so much visual stimuli and audio stimuli and to suddenly be just at home, you know, locked indoors, not being able to kind of replicate it anywhere else is really hard to take, especially because I'm trying to be careful. I think if this was a few years back, I would have done everything in my power to just be like, you know what? F that, I'm going outside. I'm going to go get loose. I'm going to go get crazy. But I'm a bit older now. I'm maturing, I hope, right? Little by little. And I'm doing things the right way. And I'm like, you know what? No, Agostino, you don't do that. You wait until it's safe. And until you've been told to go out, then you go out. And that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. But God damn, it's hard. I tell you that right now, it's bloody difficult. And I'm sure other people are in the same place. I can assume it. Even imagine if you're like a, an actual touring DJ, how this must feel then. If you just Because I've read so many horror stories about, you know, not horror stories, but so many heartbreaking stories about DJs who just got, I think I read one account of some girl who just, I don't know, she just moved out to her own place. 
um she was due to do a whole season of touring basically up until september i think maybe in that residency in that beef and some other things and then covid hit and suddenly she's back living with her mum um trying to figure out if she's even going to go back to music when everything opens up again because that's the thing people are not talking about either it's, it's all well and good us having a break but are there going to be any of these spots available when it reopens will the club still want to book you will they want to pay you even right will it be oversubscribed because essentially if no one can tour that means everyone that's not touring will be at home and they'll be hitting up the clubs wanting to get spots and they're probably i don't know maybe a couple of levels or a couple of more years experience further along than i am they might get more preferential treatment because you know if you're a bar owner and suddenly some guy that was touring uh, all over europe you know has the fucking mix features on ra suddenly wants to hit you up and play in your little bar somewhere in king's cross you're gonna be over the moon and he's happy to take 200 quid just so you can get back behind the decks playing again you're gonna take him over me any day of the weekend <laughs> so it's going to be a really hard slog for people to fighting it out for gigs like you know like it always is right because you know being a dj isn't the most complicated thing in the world it's probably the job with the you know lowest bar of entry in terms of entertainment i'd say right you can it's probably difficult it's really you know unless you've got a voice it's hard to sing and you know and be a compelling artist that people actually give a fuck about unless you can rap as well it's the same sort of thing unless you can play an instrument you've got to devote a lot of time to that as well um i guess you only you know a good easy way to come into uh, music or to get into entertainment would be to be like i don't know a harmonizing backup singer right you don't have to be that good of a singer but of course you have to sing and then and you got a job for life basically especially if you're a cool person um people will just keep using you again and again and then essentially dj because you play other people's music all you have to learn is how to beat match essentially and develop good taste in music which you know is easy to do too if you, if you care about it you'll develop good taste in music and if you don't care you can just play the top 100 of people so it, it is the lowest bar of entry in terms of entertainment so you can just imagine how packed it's going to be how um how competitive it's going to be actually between people in terms of getting gigs but on the other side of things it might also be a great time there might be a time of abundance because there might be loads of really interesting spots that open up that basically serve people needs because i think people will just be happy just to leave the house i know i will once things get you know flowing again just so i can just you know imagine grab a book and go to starbucks after work or something that'll be sick um so people will, i assume would want to do the same thing right instead of hanging out inside on a tuesday at 2 p.m they'll go somewhere else and you know work up their laptop and work from there have somebody playing some cool chill beats in the background or something right as people are milling around going in and out i can imagine that happening but we have to wait and see in it we have to wait and see um but let's get into it let's actually i think i've got a list here actually from ra that details some of the things that's going on in the world let's see what the plans are and how things are opening up in terms of dance line culture because i've you know woke up today i thought you know what i need to check out what's going on in the scene am i missing something because i'm there's part of me that's thinking you know what there might be an opportunity if things open up in like germany or something to go for like a quick trip to berlin for the weekend or to go somewhere like bristol and just hang out that might be a thing if things open up especially somewhere where there's a lot more open a lot more not also open spaces but there's a lot more places that have gardens and shit and places that you can just chill at because in the london that's the difficult part right there's not many i don't know the spots that you want to go to are going to be crowded and it, uh, it's hard to kind of figure out but let's see what the plan what is looking like across uh the country so this is from ra um how countries plan to restart client clubs and festivals and they keep updating this every day or whenever they can. Last update was Thursday. Switzerland, they're saying the Switzerland Federal Council has increased the maximum number of people allowed to attend indoor gatherings from 300 to 1,000. Of course, you heard me mention that before based on what, um, what's his face was doing? Loco, uh, Luciano, sorry. Luciano was at, um, was at Weeta Mix, right? Is that what it's called? Weeta Mix? And he played just the other day. This is a video from the night, actually. <laughs> How fun does that look? So 
Luciano played at that club called Weetermix in Switzerland. I'm assuming he's back home now due to COVID. So that's a good thing. So, you know, imagine seeing Luciano a level. Sorry, imagine seeing a DJ of Luciano's level playing in a in a club that has only three hundred people in it. What a fun, what a treat, innit? What a treat. So, um, it says for one thousand with no social distancing, according to the government site, it says the decision, which applies to concert halls, theaters, and cinemas, does contain some limitations aimed at slowing the spread. In cases where the tenants exceed 300 people, audiences will have to be separated by partitions and rooms holding up to 300. Okay, cool. That makes sense. That's a pretty good idea. Be a bit weird though, isn't it? Little clusters of 300 people um, that can't ex- necessarily pass each other, I'd assume. Um, events with more than 1,000 people remain banned until August the 31st, 2020. Okay, that's, per- that's one from Switzerland. What's happening in the Netherlands? As of tw- Netherlands aren't booking any black people, but let's see what they're doing in terms of lifting restrictions. It said, as of June 24th, the Dutch government has increased the number of people allowed in indoor spaces from 30 to 100. That's amazing jump there, provided guests have their own seats. Five of venues, the limit exceeds 250. Uh, 250, sorry, um, so these capacity restrictions do not apply when an establishment can require prior reservations, compulsory seating, and health checks on the door. The current ban on nightclubs and discos, however, remains in place until September. So they've got some firm dates there, right? Switzerland's August 31st, it says there, right? Um, yeah, August 31st, and the Netherlands is September 1st. I wish we had some dates in mind. We don't really have any dates. We've got the dates of the, the pubs opening. There's no dates for the gym. Suppose I've heard it's the 8th, the full on weekend. But that's the issue. There's no real kind of plan in place about how we go about doing it. I I, I can understand because of the numbers are peaking and they don't really want to, you know, give people any uh, encouragement to get naughty. But I'd love to have some dates out there for the British public so we can understand what's going on, man going crazy in here so it continues to say that Belgium um, has easier lockdown restrictions and will go into effect as of July 1st in Belgium Rector's reports um, the new rules allow venues to hold indoor events up to 200 people and outdoor events of up to 400 with the requirements social distancing hygiene measures are observed we are still not safe from the rebound of the epidemics of the country's Prime Minister Sophie Wilmers um, this summer will have a peculiar taste in this talking about the capacity size I'd imagine with that most venues will have to sell tickets ahead of time there'll be no you'll be you won't be able to buy tickets at the door i'd assume right just so they can um make sure they have a make sure they have a handle on the numbers and then the good thing is that venues won't be allowed to do that thing where they over they oversell tickets so they're gonna have to stick with selling the amount of tickets that they're allowed to have people inside right it's gonna have to correlate there's not, there's not gonna be any you know um grace um, either side which will be great but i guess if you're looking for a spontaneous night out not probably the thing but i guess the good thing is because everyone's been indoors for three months getting your friends together to go somewhere would be a lot easier because you know they literally got nothing to do so no one can make any excuses and i'm assuming a lot of people are driving themselves out the wall as well so that should be cool united kingdom let's say here let's say um uk has announced new guidances i don't think we've got anything new actually plan to rebuild what they're saying here 60 pay idea. I don't see any dates, just loads of stuff regarding what we're planning to do. Germany, they said the Berlin Senate has lifted all contact restrictions, which will take effect from Saturday, June 27th. Outdoor events with more than 1,000 capacity are banned through to August 31st. Then the capacity limit is raised to 5,000 through August or October 24th. Indoor events cannot exceed 300 through July 31st, and September indoor capacity limit is raised to 250. Um, German government has committed to providing 1 billion to the cultural sector with more than 150 million lots specifically for live music. Wow. Um, Germany has also allowed for all shops to reopen with social distancing measures, which has been good news for the country's record stores. Some Berlin clubs, including City Force, have reopened as of Friday, May 15th, uh, as afternoon beer gardens operating on a food license. The state of Bavaria also reopened restaurants. Nationwide, um, Germany holds a ban on clubs, theatres and cultural events until August, July 31st. So it'll be interesting to see what happens after July. Will they open things up and allow people to put on events? Probably, but judging by what they're saying, they're probably going to allow people to do like what? 1,000 capacity events will be able to be done by then. I don't know, maybe less than 1,000. So that could be a way to go in there. What's happening with America here? Uneven effort, of course, Austin, Texas and Springfield, Kentucky, pushing to open bars and meet eminent, uh, eminently. It said the world's largest concentration of infection and deaths reopening efforts in cities like New York and Los Angeles will be carried out in phases, which makes sense. 
uh, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced the city will be moving into a second phase of its reopening beginning on Monday, 22nd of June. Okay, this means that the restaurants and bars with outdoor seating will be allowed to serve spaced out tables. Customers will be required to wear masks when not at their table. Um, Ohio Music Festival SDK suing state county officials over the deemed basis ban on large events during pandemic IQ reports. Wow, an event is suing the state. That's insane. Good luck on that one. Uh, Spain with the same bars and nightclubs are allowed to reopen from June the 8th as Spain enters phase three. Okay, interesting. So they already opened their bars and nightclubs. It says, however, dancing is not allowed. Okay, fair enough. It's similar to Sisi Foss and the German bars. It says from May 21st, outdoor events of up to 400 people. Capacity events are allowed to resume. The Festival Corella, whose 2020 edition was meant to occur July 4th, has announced major initiative called uh, Cruella XXS. A series of 200 open events set to take space take place sorry, in July across Barcelona in venues such as the Design Museum of Barcelona and the gardens of the Catalan National Theatre. From July to the 1st, Spain will allow international visitors into the country, which would be a big one, I think, oh, sorry, and without a required quarantine period. I guess it's a shame there's no Ibiza, so you're not going to be able to rescue your summer that way, but if you want to just hang out and go to, you know, go and go on a bit of a pub crawl, eat some amazing food, catch some rays, get a bit of a tan, it's well worth it i think um i think prices will still be fairly cheap as well so again there is some um you know it's a shame clubs are not open but again i think if you really do want to have a late late holiday you can still do it especially if you're working from home you can you know probably squeeze in a couple of days either side australia what they're doing here they're saying they're australia and in new south wales the homestead of sydney nightclubs could be allowed to open as early as august well if the community transmission rates are kept low or their four square meter per person rule to allow for social distancing is likely to be enforced and new zealand after two weeks of lockdown new zealand prime minister announced that june 8th that all covid restrictions aside from international border controls will be lifted wow they're so happy over there portugal Iceland, a few more there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but God, man, it's just, yeah, you just have to be patient and wait. And I guess on my end, I'm just talking to myself about that, really. I'm not trying to convince you guys, but God damn it, man. Wish things could get back to normal sooner rather than later, but, you know, what can we do? Let's move on. Okay, what else we have on our list here? I want to talk about things that i've seen on the web let's get back on my list here quickly before i continue so i'm um, talking about covid and lockdown Bournemouth was crowded um i'm sure most of you are familiar with the weather in the uk i'm sure most of you know you know the weather here isn't the best it's a bit wet it's a bit dreary it's a bit cold um matches our personality as probably uh, english and british people but um the last few years the weather in the summer has been absolutely beautiful i'm not sure it's because you know as a consequence of global warming or you know it's just our turn to have some good weather but the summers have been really great um so much so that a lot of people that i know as well have been spending a lot of time traveling around england basically and discovering new places to holiday for the weekend um especially if you've kind of done everything there is to do in mainland europe you know you've done the whole bar crawl in central europe you've gone to places in eastern europe you maybe rented that into even to russia you've done the whole mediterranean bits and bobs you've done on the franco places there's not much for it else to go right especially if you've got you know a tight budget but if you do want to explore and you don't want to go on a flight anywhere and you want to be able to you know take stuff on a train and not have to you know squeeze stuff into your backpack then going somewhere within england is probably a good bet and i guess bournemouth because of the heat has been a great place and it's attracted a lot of people and this image i saw flowing around social i honestly thought was a photoshop or no first of all i thought it was an image from like you know previous bygone years then it kept floating around and i saw an actual moving image right aka a video and i was like wow this is actually happening in real life so i guess with the heat and everyone going insane being indoors people just you know essentially burst out of their homes and ran to the beach in bournemouth to get some rays and to hang out but it looks absolutely horrendous like this is my nightmare i'm not a beach person anyway right shock horror a guy you know born in a, a major city in europe does not is not a fan of beaches i don't really care right i'll go to a beach hang out but i'm not the kind of person that's going to be you know waking up early in the morning to get a good spot and running to the water i don't give a shit as long as i've got a book and i've got you know some tunes to listen to i'll probably end up falling asleep falling in and out of sleep every two two or two to three minutes 
but this scene at the Bournemouth Beach looks insane. So this is from Bournemouth Beach. It's a Bournemouth Beach um, major incident as thousands flock to the coast. This is a BBC article. It says as follows: um, Sun seekers have been urged to stay away from a beach as thousands flock to the Dorset coast, and major incident was declared on Bournemouth. Um, in Bournemouth, sorry, Bournemouth uh, Christchurch and Poll Council said that the Bournemouth beach was stretched to the absolute hills on the second day of the UK heat wave. And as you can see, that is stretch. And if you're listening via the podcast, it's essentially we're looking over hordes, hordes, like essentially a whole sea of people, some umbrellas, various, you know, Caucasian torsos all over the place, and minimum water, minimal water. You can't even see much of the water because it's just covered with people. Um, the article continues to said. Uh, the Dorset police said there were reports of gridlock roads, fights, and overnight camping. Oh, because you're not allowed to stay there overnight, I'm assuming. I wonder why that is. Is that like a security thing, or you're just not allowed? Or they're just trying to prevent bums from sleeping on the beach? Um, I, I don't know. Oh, uh, it says people were urged to act responsibly as temperatures hit the mid 20s. Mamma mia. Uh, traffic up early, traffic built up early on the coast roads, including the Dirtle Door, and people travelled um, to Bournemouth from far as Birmingham. By Thursday evening, the Stanbanks Peninsula was heavily congested, the council said, repeating its warning for people to please stay away. I wonder what the best time is to go to a place like that when everyone's going. You probably have to, well, I'd, if it was me and I was a fan of beaches, I'd probably try and get there before six, just so I can bang out my, you know, get my run on, um, get a nice sweat on, get a bit of a tan, go in the water, freshen up, come back out, crack up a bit of a, crack up a, bit of a tinny. And then, you know, head out when oh, everyone's coming in at like nine or something. That'll be beautiful, right? You've got a good tan on. You feel refreshed, ready to go. You've walked your dog if you've got one. And that, you know, dog's tired. Get back home and cook yourself a bit of dinner. That's what I do. Try to get it before six. Maybe that's a bit nuts, but I'll try to do that. But anyway, continue. So in the article, it says, um, the ferry service in Sandbanks tweeted, again, we're struggling to get traffic off the ferry as, as uh, at Pol. Uh, for now, we have we hope to carry half loads of vehicles from Studland, but depends on the gridlock in the Sandbanks tonight. I wonder if people will be making a lot of money over there as well. It says um, a local resident took a photo of the length of the queue for the Mudford ferry as the beach goes <laughs> left for the day. <laughs> oh, God, you got to love it. White mums love those dresses and those little frilly kind of like beach dresses and those sandals. It's funny and dads always love those kind of tailored shorts. Um, continues, the council said declaring a major incident meant a multi-agency emergency response has now been activated to coordinate uh, resources across the area. Okay, when you say major incident, it doesn't actually mean something happened. It just means that they want to alert people that, you know, don't come back again. Uh, it continues, it says, um, England's Chief Medical Officer, Professor Chris White, uh, Whitty, tweeted in response to Thursday's beach scenes with a warning. It said, COVID-19 will rise again, <laughs> like, um, unless people follow up. Like, they're trying to scare everyone, but it's too late. You know, people aren't bothered anymore. I think people have made the decision, you know what, if I get it, I get it, but I can't be indoors, so good luck doing that. He said, uh, Chris Whitty tweeted in response to Thursday scenes with a warning COVID will rise again unless people follow um, social distancing guidelines. Councillor, what's his name? Councillor leader Vicky Slade said they were absolutely appalled at the scenes witnessed on our beaches. The irresponsible behaviour and actions of so many people is just shocking, and our services are stretched to the absolute hill trying to keep everyone safe. <laughs> We've had no choice but now but to declare a major incident, initiate an emergency response, she said. Relax, relax, Vicky. Take it easy. Take a breather. Um, the council said it issued 558 parking fines. Now, they made, see, everything works out in the end, isn't it, right? They made some parking fines. That goes back into the council's po pockets, and then they can pretend that they're going to use that for, you know, um, what you call it? to improve uh, the roads or, you know, repair a bench or some shit. They're not going to do nothing. It's going to line their pockets and buy themselves some more Prosecco for their staff night out, which, you know, they probably deserve. This is a little video on BBC. Let's see what this buff tattooed guy is talking about. Well, I live just up the road, so I'm, I am a local person. And I thought I'll come to the beach early this oh morning my God. before it gets packed down here. Like this guy's voice is a madness. Is that real? He's, if, you're, if you're not watching this, he sounds how he looks. If that makes sense. A tin of sardines. I'm really not happy that so many people are coming down to our beaches that I can't even appreciate what's on my doorstep. Um, I think people think 
I've, I've forgot about COVID and they're having a COVID holiday. I, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. That so many people think COVID it's acceptable holiday. to come down here and use our beaches when we've got a national emergency going on. It's a national emergency and not um, a national holiday. I get his point, right? But you need to relax. You live there, right? People are wanna people wanna come down and get some vitamin D. They've watched the Joe Rogan podcast. They know the sun helps to kill the virus. They wanna get some fresh ocean air into their lungs. Allow them in it. It's gonna be in a couple of days, you know. Take it easy, you know. Um, this guy kind of reminds me of that bird watcher dude in the New York Grand Central Park, and it he's gonna start snitching on everyone and recording shit. He's probably got some treats in his pocket. He's gonna give these little girls. No, no, let's not say that because that's mean. But you know, <laughs> it's similar to that same sort of thing. But I have sympathy for the people that don't that just are, are just saying fuck it. I got sympathy for them, man. I know I shouldn't. I know it's it's irresponsible, and I'm not doing it as well, right? I'm speaking to you now, hold up in my apartment, haven't moved haven't left you know my postcode for the past i don't know 90 days or whatever it may be and more but i understand people who just can't handle it they're like you know what if you if i live next to a beach like that maybe i would have run by there a couple of times on my you know on my morning run like i just you know i was in the area i want to run by i might have done it myself as well so i have sympathy for them man. like i don't know what do you want people to do do you know what i mean like legitimately what do you want to do like our homes in the uk aren't equipped for hot weather anyway we don't no one really has air conditioning units and especially the building i live in is like a new build building so the insulation here is really good so it's amazing for the winter because you don't have to turn the heating on but in the summer it traps the heat and there's no way of cooling down so what do you want people to do come on be, be fair we've got to have a couple of drinks enjoying the sun yeah, the closest yeah. we're going to get to holiday this year isn't it so yeah. that's what we enjoy it really we'll make the most of it while you can I like this idea that you got. It's it's funny when people say that, and just got to enjoy it. It's the last holiday we're gonna do, in it. So, this idea that it's not you won't say it's selfishness, but it's a really it's a it's a it's a perverse way to look at things, right? That you think your time at the beach is more important than the overall health of a nation, or maybe putting other people at risk. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make, in it, like. As if like we're not all deserving of a holiday or we don't all want to go on holiday you know you decide that you want to go and like fuck it regardless so i guess there is an acceptance with some people that it's just like you know what if i get it i get it but i would rather get it whilst i'm on the beach and get it whilst i'm at home hold up somewhere i'd imagine so right um but again having seen some of the videos of people that do catch it it's no joke some people do you know some people get it and it's a light cold but do you really want to roll that dice i know i wouldn't and um yeah interesting i just i just wish i had that kind of i wish my brain worked that way but if somebody warns me about something i guess you know what these people kind of remind me of you know those shitty horror movies where there's or like in a thriller when somebody says okay i'm gonna go xyz place um don't move i'll be back right and look at them in the end they're like don't move i'll be right back stay right here and then as soon as the person leaves they decide to go and follow a cat somewhere down the down the set of stairs and then they get kidnapped right it's always like and i guess they that's they represent those people right they're always they just don't have any i don't know it's just you know <laughs> i don't know how to describe it i just wish i could be like that i really do but i have too much uh, well probably i'm too scared i guess i don't know or maybe i have too much sense i'm too aware of things if someone warns me not to go down not to open that door i just want to open it i'm not going to check just in case you know well it don't, i'd still not know anyone that's even at it <laughs> so in my eyes, is that really mad? Nah, that's an insane logic, isn't it? It's like saying um, you don't believe in oxygen because you can't see it, right? It's just an insane way to say things, like because no one I know has had it. That means it doesn't ha it doesn't actually exist. So how? But then that's the thing I'm thinking about because it's not. I think COVID would COVID would have been hmm, the lockdown would have worked far better in a place like the UK or in the US even if it was. A virus that you could see had some kind of phys physical no it has some sort of visual effects or visual not visual effect what's the word had some visual had something about that like, something like smallpox or lupus or whatever right where you could see somebody physically change before your eyes when they got covid but i guess because everyone just gets a flu and they cough a lot and whatever 
you don't necessarily think it's that big of a deal but if people develop you know open sores and you know their skin side to crack or their eyelid side to turn a weird color that would probably people take a lot more serious but because it's just referred to as a common cold people are like mm. but yeah as long as everyone's safe but it's getting a bit hectic down here now isn't it it's probably going to cause a second wave, isn't it? Everyone's just doing what they want, isn't they? Once you looked at it yesterday, it looked... That guy's, a, that guy's just full of confusion, isn't it? Doesn't believe it exists. Complains of the beach too full. Then worried about a second spike of a virus he doesn't believe exists. Hmm. It's really cramped. That's why we thought we'd get here early, but there's still quite a few people. But, I mean, if people get too close, we'll probably say it's going to move over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as people don't get too close to us, I think yeah. it'll be all right. Because you're stuck in it. <laughs> I wish I could be that optimistic. I wish I could just be that blissfully unaware, man. We hope it's going to be okay. If people don't stay near with me, I think it's going to be fine. No mask wearing. It's just, wow, man. I wonder what they felt when this first kind of was tearing through Wuhan and parts of Italy. I wonder what these people thought when they saw that news. What was their impression of it? Did they think it was still an, a, f a hoax? I wonder what they thought. Because I think that's what set everybody... That's what got everyone in a panic, right? Wuhan and the stuff we were seeing in Italy. And then for some, I guess some people just don't see that. They're like, hmm, no big deal. They just carry on. It's like madness, isn't it? Affects your mental health a lot, so it's great to be out, especially by the sea. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Anyway, let's move on from that one. What more can you say, man? nothing more really in it we've all i think again i'm again i'm not i'm a judgy person i think we've all got access to the same base of information you uh, analyze what's going on you then make an informed decision as an adult and decide what you think is best for yourself your friends and your family that's all you can do really um decide this whole shaming of people that are going outside i'm not really a big fan of pointing fingers recording people on a beach recording people in parks and stuff it's just like relax take it easy you know what i mean like this is not a normal situation we are social animals right we crave hanging around with people you know that's where the whole dunbar number comes uh, it comes around right but we haven't had no dunbar numbers right we've probably met may, maybe less than 10 people this whole time so you know cut people some slack i guess cut them some slack moving on we have an amc theater decide to reverse the decision about letting people go into cinemas without a mask this was a uh, an absolutely brain dead idea to begin with anyway but again it's another illustration as to just how poorly some people have dealt with covid in general i think this is what it is another illustration of that let me get up on the screen before actually ugh, it's taking up so much memory chrome eats memory doesn't it it takes up so much ram but ugh, this is one of the best things to use okay let me get this off the screen let me get that off the screen hopefully that works maybe get this as well off of it come on please work load up if you can there we go amc theaters uh coronavirus plans because a few people are thinking about going to the cinema not for me personally i'm not really a big fan you know okay it's not loading at the moment so we're going to move on to something else oh annoying in it um okay so let's move on to this story i thought this one might be a good one to talk about um how do you talk about this one? So this is from Resident Advisor. This is regarding some guy um, called, what's his name? Mind Against or something, what's his name? Mind of a Dragon has been accused of sexual assault. And of course, you know, <coughs> this got me thinking about, in general, um, what it must be like, what it must feel like to be a woman, you know, navigating nightlife. Um, and navigating maybe the electronic music scene right um i think for the most part that scene right does attract degenerates like myself right people who are probably you know if not on the spectrum <laughs> we probably float above it in some capacity right um the debauch activities the late nights the mindless conversations the random facebook ads the instagram follows the comments the sending of tunes uh you know huddling in groups of five in one toilet cu cubicle right it's just a whole complete mess right it, it just it does attract some absolute freaks so there is part of me that thinks you know with that comes a responsibility to keep that 
play safe, I think. Because if you're a freak in a club, if you're a bit of a weirdo, it's probably safe to say that you don't necessarily fit that well into with, you know, regular society. So your safe haven is the club. Your safe haven is that community that you've kind of fostered over years on the dance floor, years in the toilet booth, <laughs> years at the bar, years at the DJ booth, right? That's where you've kind of fostered the relationships and they've allowed you to maybe get involved in the scene. Maybe it's allowed you to do other things to support that habit of going out regardless, right? It's a really cool community, but I do feel sometimes a responsibility, especially when I'm in spaces or I put on a, an event or I'm playing somewhere, to be a good guest i guess that's probably something i've always been conscious of when i've gone out maybe it's because i've grown up in ends and there was always that kind of thing in the back of your head that you always got gonna get chucked out of a house party so you tried to especially the house party you wasn't invited to you tried your best to just be a good guest you didn't want to piss anybody off you didn't want to make a bad impression so it was all about making sure you weren't sloppy right and of course i've had my sloppy occasions we all have i think but you tried your best not to be sloppy to the point where you're making people feel uncomfortable especially girls especially that at that time especially when i was promoting nights right because part of the reason why i enjoyed promoting those nights i put on was because you got to be surrounded with random girls right you had to be you had suddenly had a bit of value uh, exchange that you could kind of you know dance with right there was something cool that you could offer right uh, uh drinks tokens uh, guest list spots whatever right it kind of you know the ability to kind of get put something in a dj booth like a bag or a jacket you know those things kind of it's just nice so if with that you didn't want to ruin your relationship with these girls because part of the reason why you went to befriend them was you know they went to befriend you to get free entry you went to befriend them so they, they made the party a bit more palatable right for regular folk you don't want to be in a club surrounded with loads of dudes so it was a kind of win-win relationships but you just had to make sure that you never crossed that line of like you know being and what's that thing called um being inappropriate with people that you were kind of close to in that kind of club environment sometimes it did happen don't get me wrong but you made sure it was like a it was like a rule that you tried to abide by as part as best as you could and i think it's a real responsibility especially again i think in everyday life it's a bit difficult right the lines get blurred but i think once you start entering into subcultures right like areas of interest that you're an area of interest that you kind of form the community and i really do think it's responsibility of you know the guy and the girl regardless of who's in this kind of you know dance of sexual attraction to really be um to really be um i don't know cool about how to interact with each other because if we can't look after ourselves there's no hope for the outside world there's literally no hope so this story is a bit disconcerting to read um but we'll read it anyway this is from ra it said conductors key records cuts ties with mind of a dragon over sexual assault allegations it says conductors key records um has cut uh, the times with uk artists mind of a dragon following allegations of sexual assault on june 23rd a twitter user called whatever the name is there detailed a description of an alleged sexual assault uh, by moad a by moad a real name of grant dragon in the back of a taxi in august 20 2019 now don't get me wrong i think and again this is what makes this whole lockdown situation so heartbreaking because for sure these stories are only coming about because some of these girls are just spending prolonged periods prolonged periods at home right driving themselves up the wall and i guess when you're living that fast-paced life of always being outside you probably don't you probably try and put these kind of dark um experiences to the back of your mind but spending all this time alone in your flat or with housemates or just with your own thoughts it's probably you know really stirred up some weird emotions right so all those experiences that you put to the back of your head are now coming to the forefront and you just can't get it out you just can't you know you can't function unless you kind of just say it out loud so it must be such a painful time for some people that have had been subject of um, sexual assault or misconduct it just must be so terrible because at the same token you know i'm sure because the people always that's why sometimes i get annoyed at the whole like council culture the any no, people are not fans of council culture in some regards you know it can get a bit too crazy right people can come out with some ludicrous allegations that have no merit just so that they can see you burn fair enough but in some cases i have sympathy with it because i think to myself legitimately if you're a woman right you probably don't want to ruin someone's life with an allegation you don't you really don't but when that person is you know um i guess not receptive to your concerns they don't want to apologize they're kind of gloating about the issue they're rubbing it in your face you probably are aware that it's going to take 
you're probably not going to be able to prosecute them in a court of law, right? The only other thing that you can do to give yourself some sort of sense of retribution is to publicly disgrace them. That's the least you can do. And then for the people that are like, oh, but you're going to ruin his life, you know, he's going to be able to get another job, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but you should have thought about that before you start, you try to finger your friend. Do you know what I mean? That's not on. That's not a cool thing to do. So I guess I have sympathy with that. I do it a lot. And again, like I said, I, I just think they shouldn't cross that line when it comes to subcultures. There should be like an unwritten rule where you look after your own, right? You don't allow, because that's what it should be like. It should be like, you know, if I'm in a scene somewhere and I know guys or girls regardless, I'm going to kind of look out for them even though they don't really know me. And if I see somebody that I don't know and harassing them, I'm going to stand up. For, I'll stand up for them. And the hope is that they'll do the same for me right but you're looking out for each other because you know you've seen each other here but it's happened to me plenty of times right you've seen you know i remember being in a club sometime and seeing a girl looking quite uncomfortable with a dude and me pretending i was her boyfriend for a bit just so i can get away from the guy and and, and help her go find her friends it, you know you just do that not because you want to be a, a white knight but because it's just you know you've seen that person three or four times in a club and it's just it's a decent thing to do um but yeah this this um issue is pretty disconcerting i read a bit of it earlier but let me get a rest of it now so this is the entire tweet explaining exactly what happened and if you read it it's just heartbreaking stuff man um so this is from the lady in question she, she says in a tweet here uh trigger warning uh details of sexual assault this is my experience with grant dragon aka mind of a dragon it's a weird name in it and said um i'm coming forward with my experience i had with grant dragon aka mind of a dragon m-o-a-d um in the early hours of the 5th of August 2019, Grant sexually assaulted me during a cab ride back to West London from South to St. Sutton. He had been at, we had been at a festival in Maiden before going to a hotel in Sutton for drinks with a group of about eight of us. Grant and a friend and myself got into an Uber to go back to West London. We all sat in the back with Grant in the middle seat and me on the left. I leant forward in my seat so to steady myself with, from feeling sick. I was quite heavily intoxicated already this is getting oh yeah grant began to rub my look my mid and lower back over my clothes he then put his hand down the back of my dress to rub my bare skin god almighty he then began to massage my shoulders and neck and head with an uncomfortable and almost painful force he then began groping my fine kiss in the back of my neck which he continued to do for some time he then began rubbing my hand that rested on my legs so that i said ugh sometimes i feel, look man like i don't know if that's your friend like what are you doing like what are you doing Ugh. um he took anyway he continues said he took the hand and placed it on his crotch he then moved my hand away and placed it back onto his crotch this time with his genitals exposed he held my hand on his genitals for a short time during that entire time i was completely frozen and unable to move i hoped my lack of movement and reaction would make him leave me alone but it didn't and that's the heartbreaking thing when you read these stories, right? Women are always, especially in terms of the power imbalance, like physically, it seems like most of these stories you hear, you always hear the incident of like um, the woman sort of like describing the incident f um, outside. It's like an outside, it's like an out of body experience, how they describe it. They're so detached from it, which is really frightening. It's a, it, in, fact, in fact, they kind of like turned off, right? They switched off and became numb. And I would think to myself, like, as a dude, um, especially when you've, you're used to getting you're used to getting rejected so often you know what the signs are when someone doesn't like you right you can read them quite quickly because you've got them before right you've got some sort of experience <gasps> some experience with that so you'd hope that if you were a dude and you were touching a girl up in the back of a car imagine because we don't know what happened in the club let's say he got the wrong end of the stick and he fought in a club there was a chance that he could hook up with this girl you shouldn't do that with your friends anyway but let's say that happened um if that's the case you should have got an indication from the place that you're at prior to getting into the car, whether it was a go or not. But it also should be a part of you where you should be repulsed or put off by the idea of trying to hook up with your friend when they're heavily intoxicated. It should, should just be a thing. I don't know. I've, you know, I think some people, have, we've all had drunk sexual encounters, but when the other person's not into it, you don't just continue trying to get it done, right? You just let it go. It's one of them things. You just have to choke up to the game and try again another time. Um, you don't try and p pursue it in the hopes that they're going to change their mind because I don't know there's just a weird line that that crosses in it trying to persuade somebody whilst they're heavily intoxicated to reciprocate your sexual advances 
especially when they're making no effort to reciprocate, right? They're giving you all the indication that they don't want you anywhere near them. And they're only there because, you know, unfortunately you placed yourself in a position where they were sitting in the middle, maybe because she's the girl, she had to sit in the middle because she's smaller or next to him. It's just ugh, such a terrible situation. Um, it continues here. It says the other passenger was completely unaware of what was happening, which is the heartbreaking thing, right? Due to being asleep with his he head in between his legs, he was very also very drunk. We arrived at the passenger's address, which was very close proximity to Grant's. Um, instead of going to his address next, the Uber was directed to mine, which was about half an hour drive away. Grant stayed in the car. Again, creep, just leave, man. So he moved over to the window seat on the right and I was silent for a while. I was crying to him to myself while trying to hide it from him. He then moved back over to the middle, placed his hands on my shoulder and fire and repeatedly asked me, are you all right, babe? I nodded so he would leave me alone. When we reached my address, I ran out to the car into my house. I got into my bedroom and broke down hysterically. I messaged my closest friends and told them what just happened. Two days later, I confronted Grant via text. He kind of didn't happen, stating he was asleep. Oh. Again, man, why must guys be such dicks to decent women? Imagine going through such an ordeal, right? And then she still had the decency. She still had the class. She still had the whatever that word is, right? To process it over two days and then text him for an explanation. She didn't, you know, women truly don't. Deserve, some women don't deserve men, man. Or some men don't deserve women in some regards. It's just like, God almighty, dude. Um, he said he didn't believe me and that he would never do that. It's not him at all. And he would never hurt me. I reported it to the police, but the entire investigation was a shambles. Grant ignored all the police attempts to contact him for a month. He finally attended a voluntary interview after a letter was posted to his address. He denied everything. The Uber driver was also interviewed, but claims he didn't witness anything as he was just uh, concentrated on driving. The case was closed due to lack of evidence. God almighty, man. Um, and then I guess off the back of that, everyone's dropped him rightfully so and it said the year and um record said we're moving removing all of his releases from our back catalog slime recording group said a message from slime team and said in light of recent allegations so information that has come out regarding mind of a dragon we will be working with our distribution partner to remove all of his previous releases from slime um this place called what's this is most going to deny this to another allegation god almighty conductor or guessing as part of key records says all forms of sexual abuse and misconduct is without doubt is without any doubt unacceptable and should be rooted out immediately i urge everyone to speak out against it it says the statement from kiwi it says kiwi records is aware and extremely concerned by allegations against my and it's interesting that they're using his name in the statement too they're going straight out and saying it said them i take them very seriously with immediate effect key records is no longer affiliated with mind of a dragon and furthermore his music will be removed from our catalog actions like this will not be tolerated in our community we are committed to ensuring a safe space for people at all times is very important and only through solidarity with survivors and against uh action and against action and action against abusers can we end the perpetuation of the cycles of abuse we urge all supporters and followers to speak out against all forms of sexual abuse and misconduct and then keep hush what's this to then keep hush operations zero tolerance regarding sexual abuse we are moving mind against sex immediately and we will not be working with them in the future we echo conductor speak up against abuse believe victims this is no place in our scene for abusive behavior and again just i don't know man i wish there was more is it i don't know if it's like training or if it's like you know there needs to be something done about um, how guys sort of like navigate the scene and how they deal with women in the scene in general because I think there is a lot of mess happening there um, just people just not acting right in it just not being gentlemen um, not have, treating people with respect again because again this girl didn't have to text him she didn't have to hit him up and say hey by the way that wasn't cool blah 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 you know give him a chance to apologize and then basically spit in her face right that's just not acceptable really and again i just think there's such responsibility within our little scene right nightlife club culture um electronic music to just look after each other because again if we can't do that how can we get, then get angry when our brothers and sisters go out and play major clubs somewhere in some shitty town right for some big bucks and then they get treated like shit and then we are all up in arms we can't be that hypocritical if we're not treating ours fellow brothers and sisters well within our own backyards you know we can't then get angry when some chav down the road decides to try and grope somebody because we're doing the same thing by ignoring the situation that happens in our clubs or by perpetuating it by you know 
taking advantage of people that are trying to make it their own way it's just yeah it's unfortunate man it really really is man again i've no idea who this guy is don't know the girl myself but i thought the story needed to be spoken about and again maybe there is a lesson to be learned here maybe there is something to be done a workshop a class something to kind of talk about how to conduct yourself and it, maybe they do that already in some clubs that provide safe spaces they provide them um, some guidelines and some um, house rules about how you conduct yourself but it needs to be something that kind of is implemented nationwide or scene wide right in terms of how to really act in this because it's difficult i guess isn't it because some people just don't do this sort of stuff he might be an anomaly right not everyone is going to be trying to touch up their drunk friend in the back of a cab on the way home and it um some people can just keep their hands to themselves i guess but yeah sad event all along and i hope that girl gets all the hope that she hope the help that she deserves anyway moving on what else is next on the list <coughs> oh bloody hell sorry oh we got um miley cyrus is sober that's a big news isn't it do you know about that she did a little interview with Variety and essentially told them that she's gone sober, which I'm surprised about. Again, I'm not, i got to say, I'm still not a fan of Miley Cyrus. I think the whole affair with, you know, jumping into hip hop and grinding all up against Robin Thicke essentially could lead into the breakup of his marriage and, you know, uh, twerking on Michael made it and then turning around and saying you know hip-hop was you know bottom feeder music just rubbed me up the wrong way and i think a lot of fans of hip-hop would say the same thing she came in um put on a bit of blackface culturally and then ducked out when things got sticky and went back to you know sinking singing country ballads which is, she's really good at um but i don't know um she's super talented and i think sometimes when you're that young and you're going through stuff especially when it's been tainted with drugs and alcohol, it can lead you a bit astray. And I just thought in general about the whole of her being sober as maybe an indication that she wants to take things to the next level because she's supremely talented, isn't it? As a musician, as an artist, right? As a singer, um, the ability is clearly there, but maybe the application isn't. Maybe, you know, if you're spending most of your time hungover, it's probably hard to record music and go to the studio. And there's, And in my opinion, I've always been a believer that the people, especially the artists that perpetuate this idea that they're always on it 24 seven aren't usually, it's the kind of, the, the, just the general kind of um, understanding that we have about future, right? That he purports to be this guy that's pipping pills all the time, but it's impossible to do that if you're, you know, making albums worth of 24, 26 track songs, jumping on everyone's, jumping on everyone's song and doing a feature. It's just impossible to do that. Um, so, and and it also does seem if you look at you know contemporary pop stars we have at the moment or icons within their um, genres there does seem to be a point where they have to sort of like decide whether they want to be just like a regular average random artist or if they want to be you know a big artist they have to just decide and then you have to kind of correlate actions towards them and one of the things that a lot of those people do is is sack off the drugs and alcohol it's a common theme i've seen um it's a common theme i've seen amongst some of the more prominent artists and i think she's got a bit here where she mentions it da, 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 da. um she said uh, this is a question here uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah so do you ever look back at some of the things that you've done and say what was i thinking and my Cyrus says one of my favorite interviews is when i say anyone that smokes weed is a dummy that one i love so to send to my parents who are big stoners every now and then it's been really important for me over the last year living a sober lifestyle because i really want to polish up my craft i had a really big vocal surgery in november i had freaking four weeks where i wasn't allowed to talk i was so ripped writing on the whiteboard yelling at everybody laughs and i had this one big bicep from just yelling at my mom still trying to do meetings but it prepared me for the stillness and the quietness and that happens and you have a really big crisis of a moment right imagine if you're mighty Cyrus and you lose your voice right she's got a pretty distinctive voice singing and speaking so to lose that must be really frightening because that's essentially your identity your entire identity is your voice and then to suddenly lose that just for you no fault of your food through the up for your own fault right let's stay late at night smoking drinking getting into all sorts of madness um it makes you re it makes you revise what you're doing and think you know what i can't take this gift i've been given for granted so that's a good to see and it continues to say what was the surgery for my doctor she says here looked at my vocal 
political cause and he said no one shy has ever got to got has as no one shy ever has to get this surgery this is from overuse of your vocal cords he says um it's no surprise that i would have this i've been touring since i was 12 but it's not even the touring that's a hard part it's you end up staying up late and meetups and greetings and things like that and obviously i just talk a shit ton and he continues he says um you mentioned living a sober life so i said are you sober sober she said yeah i've been sober for six months um at the beginning it was just about the vocal surgery but i've been thinking a lot about my mother my mother was adopted and i inherited some of her feelings that she had the abandonment feelings and i wanted to prove that you're wanted and valued my dad's parents divorced when i was three so my dad raised himself i did a lot of family history which is a lot of addiction and mental health challenges so just going through all that asking why am i the way i am by understanding the past we understand the present and the future much more clearly i think therapy is great so she definitely sounds a lot more mature and it's really interesting to think about that right that you know so there is a the idea that some of her addictions and personality quirks are inherited right but then sometimes to deal with some of those quirks that you have um or with your macabre view of the world whatever it may be you might want to medicate yourself right you might want to numb the pain um, drink and do alcohol which is essentially the one thing that you can't do because your dna predisposes you to addiction it's a really messed up thing in it? it how it works and i think in the future we'll look at drug addiction a lot with a lot more we we'll look at drug addiction with a lot more sympathy. I think nowadays we do sort of kind of, you know, dash people to the side if they are hooked on certain things, right? Um, for some reason. But I think once we start, once science kind of progresses and we start to have new findings about, you know, what actually happens with addiction and we start to get some definitive proof behind it, we'll look back on how we treated people that had severe drug addictions, right, especially running in their family and we'll be a lot more, we'll be hopefully be more sympathetic, more sympathetic, sorry, um, in the future regarding that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, man, it's great to hear that she's sober, great to hear that she's trying to get her life back in order. And again, I just think it's a cautionary tale for a lot of young creatives coming up in the scene you know in order to do really great work you have to just commit 100 percent. there's no way you can they, i think the anomalies exist right you think of lemmy from motorhead you think of you know i think you're from black sabbath right there are some that do exist right my entire even you know he's still alive um they do exist these anomalies but i think for the most part if you really want to be a great if you really want to just pursue your craft regardless of being great just if you want to just continue playing open mics in your local bar scene you have to get to a point where you just can't be drinking every time you go and play you just can't do it you have to make a choice of like okay cool i'll have one when i'm finished or i have one on my way back or i only do it on the last month of the week whatever you're gonna or last weekend of the month sorry you're gonna have to do something that allows you to do most of your craft with a clear mind and i'm a big fan of doing it i remember when i first started djing as well i, I was a big fan of just doing completely sober because i wanted to feel i wanted to feel how awkward it was i didn't want to numb it right i wanted to feel the awkwardness of it um i went to just feel uncomfortable so i could get used to that uncomfortable feeling sober so that when i'm doing it drunk i would obviously be you know used to it or i would just have such a skill set built up of doing it sober that i wouldn't want to put myself at any disadvantage by kind of you know um getting intoxicated before a gig and i think that's really important and again i'm I'm a nobody to, to give you that kind of advice but i think if you are pursuing something and you just want to take it to the next level usually that's something that's going to make a big change the idea of just like doubling down and concentrating on the work and kind of ignoring everything else but it's so hard to do that it's so so difficult especially with if you've got a big group of friends um or if you or if you happen to be the person in your group who is clearly defined no or if you happen to be that person in your group whose identity is you know mostly centered around going out and getting wasted it's very difficult then to change that especially amongst your friends they're not gonna take to it lightly but yeah big up uh, Miley cyrus for changing things around still haven't forgiven her for the hip-hop shit but you know personally big you up what else has got here on a list to talk about ba, 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 ba. they were trying to cancel joey diaz that didn't work that's good news there and the crystal stuff i'll probably speak about it tomorrow mm. what else we want to speak about here i think that might be it you know yeah i think that's it let's leave it there actually um 
Yeah, leave it there. Let's leave it there. This is, yeah, let's leave it there. I think I've got some other topics I want to speak about, but I want to give those my full attention. And there's a lot of kind of text to read up on those things to get going. But yeah, this is an hour is excellent. It was in a show. Um, as per usual, thanks so much for tuning in. Or in case you're wondering what I'm reading at the moment, this is actually going before I duck out. Um, Michelle Welbeck, Serotonin. This has given me a very different idea on. Um, it gave me a different understanding or different view on how we treat sexual relations between men and women in the workplace or just in general in life. Michelle Welbeck is a very honest writer. He gives it to you straight. Um, some of the accounts in here, I'm hoping, are a work of uh, fiction, but I, I guess they're probably not. You know, if you're Michelle Welbeck, you don't talk no shit. But this book is amazing so far. I'm close to finishing it and yeah eye-opening book in terms of what's happening it's very interesting to read this and then you know read what's happening with crystalia and his allegations you know um he sort of prides himself michelle Werbeck, on being a debauched um aloof coof and just you know a guy right unabashed male you know with sexual desires and rotten thoughts and a bleak view in humanity um it's a really 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 eye-opening book honestly and maybe it's a cultural thing maybe over there in france they just don't take things that we take here in the uk or in parts of north america that seriously right um yeah it's a very very interesting book i really recommend you check it out i'm gonna buy a few of these others when i finish this as well I'm gonna click complete the set but um michelle werbeck sorry turning check it out check it out but yeah anyway this is excellent English episode number what three three two. Thanks so much for tuning in. As per usual, if you want more information regarding myself, make sure to check out my website excellentzinger.com in the description below. If you want to help out the show, all I ask for you is to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and if you can, leave me a comment, ask me something, whatever it may be, I'll endeavour to get back to you asap. And if you're listening via the podcast app, of course, leave me a five star review on whatever platform you're using, and share the show with your family and friends. Until then, take care, everybody. Be safe. Bye.